Class is dismissed, boys and girls. <laughs> Previously on the YTV Retrospective. Quiet! If I want to spread peanut butter on my body and dance, that's my business. There are many animation studios that have thrived here in Canada. You have the big one in Nirvana, the leader in CGI television for a while in Mainframe Entertainment, which we have talked about before, and then there are those who, while not having many original contributions of their own under their belt, helped in making many other successes a reality. Today we're going to talk a little bit about Studio B Productions. Studio B was formed in 1988, with their head office located in Vancouver, British Columbia, the same city that houses not only Mainframe Entertainment, but also Studio B's office neighbors with Nurcore, another studio in the realm of CGI. Many of Studio B's productions were commissioned by other studios. Disney, making a few episodes for several series, including The Mighty Ducks, and all of Season 3 of Timon and Pumbaa, Warner Brothers with a few episodes of the short-lived Road Rovers, and actually, the first season of Johnny Test. Nelvana with episodes of Ace Ventura Pet Detective, Blasters Universe, and Ned's Newt to name a few, and Hasbro Studios, co-producing both Transformers Rescue Bots and all of My Little Pony Friendship's Magic, including the movie and its spin-offs. And while Studio B may have not had their name as top billing for a lot of these, they have helped contribute to even larger success. Now you may be asking, does Studio B have any original shows to their name? Why, as a matter of fact, they do! These shows were split between Teletoon and YTB. The first two original series were What About Mimi on Teletoon and Demina Leagues on CTV. Their most recent work was the PBS Kids series Martha Speaks. Now what was YTV's first big production with Studio B? For this, we may need to look a bit... North. Out of all of Canada, there is one place that is sometimes overlooked, despite taking up most of the country, and that is the Northern Territories. Unlike the provinces, the territories of Canada have no inherent sovereignty, and have only those powers delegated to them by the federal government. They are the home of many of Canada's Aboriginal peoples and cultures. These consist of Nunavut, the youngest of the three as it became part of Confederation in 1999, the Northwest Territories, and our main destination for today, the Yukon. Known as the hotspot for finding gold during the Klondike Gold Rush in 1869, a territory filled with nature and bordering between Canada and the United States. Today we will be talking about the Yukon and the smelly French explorer who found his way there. This is Yvonne of the Yukon. Yvonne the Yukon is the story of Yvonne Ducharme, a French explorer from the 1700s who embarks on a journey to North America on behalf of King Louis XIV. However, on his journey, he strays way off course, ending up in the Canadian northern coast, falls overboard, and gets frozen in a block of ice. 300 years later, in what is now the Yukon Territory, a teen named Tommy Tuckyuk, played by Kirby Morrow, stumbles upon him after his sled dog... Um thaws him out, and now Yvonne finds himself in the modern day. Hey, just be happy he was Yvonne and not someone else. Am I glad he's frozen in there and that we're out here and that he's the sheriff and that we're frozen out here and that we're in there and I just remembered we're out here. What I want to know is where's the caveman? Yvonne has made a new place to live in Tommy's hometown, Up Your Mucklock, a small town in the middle of nowhere known as the hottest coal town in the Arctic midway between Shiver Me Timbers and Frostbottom Falls. A town that doesn't even show up on the map between the two. Up Your Luck is home to many unusual people, including Tommy's father, Bill, played by Aboriginal actor Glenn Gold, who runs the restaurant Mad Cossacks. Tommy, you hold him down. I'll beat him up. Got it. Luba Malloy, the local police chief, often arresting criminals, primarily Gary, 
sounds a lot like Mike Tyson. Give up! Give up! <laughs> oh, beginner's luck! Rematch! That's 99 out of 100. The spineless Willie Tidwell, who was the government official of the town, it was also him who took Up Your Muckluck off the map. Big Mary Hatfield and her husband Harland, who run the local bingo hall. Mary often throws Harland all over the place. Now, how did these two hook up, seeing how Harland is more the pushover of the relationship? Yikes! And the Duke, who is the richest person in Up Your Muckluck. How? That's a very good question. Right out the gate, I like the theme song. It's a very catchy sea shanty that tells you all you need to know about the series. Though when it gets to this line, three hundred years past and with some irony, you can easily tell if this show is for you. Then again, this is about a guy who is walking around in his underwear the entire series. It is filled to the brim with fart jokes, lots of gross-out humor, and... Under your mini ribbons of shame! Oh, yes, sir! Oh, yes, sir! Oh, yes, Oh, yes, sir! Oh, yes, Oh, yes, Oh, no! That's crazy! Possibly racist stereotypes. Though there are some decent jokes if you know where to look. I'm not a walrus. I'm the Eggman. <laughs> To be fair, it could have been much, much worse when it comes to the gross-out humor. Yvonne often has flashbacks about his time as a servant to King Louis XIV, played by Ian James Cortlet. Despite the king treating him as poorly as possible, he still enjoyed it. His loyalty was unwavered. Though, the show is more about Yvonne fitting into modern society. While having an obsession with the past gripped with an iron fist, and the friendship between him and Tommy. Yvonne, are you okay? Madame, I swear, these are not my underwear. Uh-oh. If I had to pick a good episode to recommend, it would be From Mars to Eternity. It is the annual potluck in Up Your Muckluck, and everyone brought boring dishes to the festivities. The main exception was Yvonne, who brought a cheese fondue, which won first prize. Whoever eats it starts tripping out. And slowly turn into psychedelic hippies. Now with everyone tripping out, Yvonne tries to take over the city in honor of King Louis. Today, Yvonne will conquer up your mucklock! I guess you could say this episode was a trip. I don't know what to do with you guys. The series was created by Ian James Cortlet and Terry Classen who are better known for their voice work, usually together, including the ocean dub of Dragon Ball Z, Baby Looney Tunes, Rama One Half, The Bots Master, The Cramp Twins, and many more. Yvonne the Yukon lasted from 2001 to 2004, with three seasons and 52 episodes. It had a surprisingly good rerun life on YTV, APTN, the Aboriginal People's Television Network, and on CBBC in the UK. It even won a few awards, primarily dominating the main animation categories at the 2002 Leo Awards, an award show that promoted the best of television in British Columbia. The BBC actually liked the series and approved it for the third and final season. Yvonne co-hosted along with the cast of Studio B's second YTV series, Being Ian, in an event for Canada Day called The Big Barbecue Blowout, which promoted Canadian shows including Yvonne the Yukon, Being Ian, Martin Mystery, and Captain Flamingo. If you want to check out the show for yourself, there have been a few DVD releases which unfortunately were discontinued. But 13 episodes of the series have been made available on the official Yvonne of the Yukon YouTube channel. And also it has an official channel devoted to episodes dubbed in German. Studio B hit the ground running, but can they follow it up with their next? That is a story for another time. When we come back, we're heading into the world of video games again to ask a very simple question. What do I need to know before I buy a video game? Next time on the YTV Retrospective.
check this out. 